Hey guys, Corey here. Today, I wanted to begin going over some of the advanced features of Apollo GraphQL Server, starting with subscriptions. Previously, I did a crash course on Apollo Server GraphQL, but we were really just going over the basics of what Apollo Server GraphQL offered, uh, such as standard queries and mutations. There's a lot of advanced features that Apollo Server GraphQL offers, which is one reason why I really love it. Um, but there's many other reasons to love it as well. The first thing that we're going to go over is Apollo GraphQL subscriptions. And this video is just going to cover the server side of things. There's also a client implementation as well, but we'll do enough here today to really help, help you wrap your head around what essentially subscriptions are. So uh, we'll start out by just going over two terms that are used with any sort of subscription implementation and that's to is a subscribe and publish um, these are the two key things that go with subscriptions and the way you can think about this is typically a client or usually several clients they will subscribe to updates uh, on a particular server and then somewhere along down the line a, there, a triggering event will occur whether that's some sort, of sort of update that comes from some other source or some sort of comp, uh, computed value. And that information will then get published over to whatever clients are subscribing um, on that particular subscription. Uh, um, it can sound a little complex at first, but once you actually dive down and start using it, you can find that it's pretty intuitive. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go. We're gonna start off piece by piece. We're gonna go over the GraphQL subscription model, starting off with the subscribe piece, and essentially what happens. Um, so, <laughs> with your interaction between the client and the server, uh, the first thing that happens is your client will actually subscribe to particular updates uh, on data from your GraphQL server. Uh, and that's done through a function that you get from Apollo Server called pubsub.asyncIterator and then you pass in essentially a string that represents the type of update that, that you want to listen to. Uh, so for like a chat app you might want to listen on a, a new message update uh, and you know you can, you can have many different uh, tags that clients can subscribe to. Um, the subscription request is received by the subscription resolver on the server. And then after that, a WebSocket connection is established between the server and the client. So for those of you who don't know what a WebSocket is, a WebSocket is a, it's a bi-directional persistent connection that allows uh, communication back and forth between the client and the server. And typically this operates really quickly because you don't have to uh, open the connection before sending the message. The connection is already open so you can just send messages back and forth. Uh, before I continue, there's one important thing that I do want to mention about uh, GraphQL subscriptions and, and because of this WebSocket layer. So you may be familiar with some serverless technologies such as uh, AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Functions or some of these other, other serverless technologies. The way they work is <clears throat> when you're not using them, they will essentially shut down uh, to, to you know, save resources, save bandwidth. Because of that, GraphQL subscriptions does not work with serverless technologies because it is dependent on this WebSocket connection. So just be wary of that if you plan on going serverless. You should be aware that you cannot use any sort of socket uh, communications, at least at the time of, the, uh, of this recording. Uh, as um, AWS AppSync is an exception to this, but all the other ones like uh, Google Cloud Functions, Firebase Cloud Functions, uh, AWS Lambda, you cannot use GraphQL subscriptions with because it will kill your WebSocket connection. Okay, so that's the subscribe piece. Now there's the published piece, which is um, a little less trivial. 
So uh, I guess before we get started, uh, a few different things. You've you've got a GraphQL server. You also will typically have some sort of database that you use to persist your data, and you also have clients. The first thing that happens is your data comes in from some source, and this could be this could be another client. This could be some other uh, server that sends in some sort of information. And then once you're on the server, if a subscription event is triggered, the server will then publish updates to any subscribing clients. And the way it does this is a simple method that you get from Apollo GraphQL server called pubsub.publish. And then you pass in whatever uh, tag you want uh, to publish an update to. And so if you remember up before on the subscribe piece, it's worth subscribing to some sort of, you know, string based tag. Uh, so, you know, in this case, this, um, this triggering event is a new message as well. So all the clients who have subscribed to that new message triggering event, um, will get some sort of notification. In addition to that, you can also pass in a callback function as a second argument. Uh, optionally if you want to perform some sort of operation um, and we can sh get more into that when, once we actually go through the coding example. Um, but then after that obviously the updates are then published to any subscribing clients um, which is great. And then after that happens typically optionally what you can do is you would then um, up send the data updates to your database um, to store. Um, and typically what I like to do is um, if, if you do have a failure, you can then send an update back to your um, GraphQL subscription to let it know that there was a failure and you need to reverse the update. So um, you could technically, if you wanted to, you could update the database first and then once it's successful, then you can trigger your PubSub event. However, for speed, I would recommend doing the more optimistic route where you first get the update at the GraphQL server, go ahead and publish the update to the scrubbing clients, and then updating your database, and then reverting on a failure, because the chance of a failure is very, very low. So it's best to optimize speed in this case. Okay. Um, so that's an overview of how it essentially works. And now we're just going to go to a coding example. Um, now I'm just going to run through uh, what you would actually do to set up the code. Um, okay. So we're just going to build on the um, the setup that I did in the previous Apollo GraphQL server tutorial, and you can find a link to that GitHub repo in the description in case you, you uh, want to save some time. Um, but this is, this is a pr pretty simple uh, Apollo server implementation. I have um, a bunch of fake data of employees and employers. And we just have some simple operations. You can just query for the list of employers and employees. Uh, you could query information about employers, information about employees, such as name. Um, there's a f just a few operations you can do. You can add an employee, you can remove an employee, you can change the employee name, and you can change the employer. If I go um, to our playground, uh, I can just show you a quick example. Um, you can just I can just query for the list of employees, and I can get their name, and I can get their employer. Uh, whoop, sorry, <laughs> I forgot. I need to, uh, I, did, I do need to actually start this service. Uh, so if I do that, you can come in here and you, you can actually look at the employees set up here. So the way this works is I've got a list of employees. They each have an employer. So you got John Smith, he works for Henry's Pub. Lauren Armstrong works for Harry's Pub. And, uh, Henry works for Harry's as well. Jake Snar works for UPS. So just very simple data. Uh, you can also query on employers. 
and you can look at uh, the ID name uh, num employees which is a count of the employees and you can look at um, information about the employees as well I'll just do name and you can you can query this here and you can see um, Harry's Pub has three employees that's John Smith, Lauren Armstrong, Henry Baptista UPS has one employee, Jake Snarl so a really, really simple, really simple implementation. So we're just going to add a subscription to this to listen for any new employees updated. All right, so if I go back to my code, the first thing that we're going to do, and Apollo Server version 2 made this very, very simple for us. Subscriptions work out of the box. In version 1, you had to do a bunch of importing from third parties and stuff like that. Don't have to do that here. You simply you simply import pub sub, uh, if I can spell that right, uh, from Apollo server. Uh, and then what you want to do with pub sub uh, is, I'll go ahead and declare it down here just to make this look a little bit easier, is you will, you can just call a pub sub variable and I'm actually going to make a slight change here the, the constant I'm going to call pub sub but technically I'm importing a constructor function and when you do that you, you, you're going to want to capitalize uh, the variable um, so I'm just going to call that pub sub that I imported and that's it so from there, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a subscript, or I'm, I'm going to create a subscription tag, um, and I'm going to call it new employee. Um, what this tag is, if you go back to um, this example here, when we're referencing this string here. This is essentially a tag that you're referencing uh, when you're subscribing and when you're publishing. So typically in implementation, you'll, you'll create tags like this. And I'm just saving them off as, as a variable here just to make it simpler for us. Uh, the next thing that you do is add, add a subscription definition to your type defs. So you remember last time we, you know, we created uh, a bunch of mutations and a bunch of queries. You're going to do th the same exact thing for subscriptions. So I'm going to do type subscription. And you're going to define all the subscriptions that you want to have in your application right here. And we're just going to have one. We're going to call it new employee. And it's going to have one parameter. It's actually going to be optional. It's, uh, it's employer. Uh, actually, no, it's employer ID. Um, and we make it optional by not putting in this exclamation point. If you put that in the, that exclamation point, that field will be required. So we want it to be optional. And it's going to return an employee uh, data type, um, which you know we, we use pretty often in some of our other functions. It's just a uh, you know a little object with uh, an ID, name, and employer. Okay, so now that type def is set up, um, we're going to go down uh, to our resolver section, and I'm just going to do it here at the top. I'm going to add in a subscription uh, object here. I'm going to make sure I hit put the comma after that. And we're going to define our resolver. So we're going to say new employee. And there's a few different things you, we can put here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a subscribe function here. And initially, what I'm going to do is a very simple implementation. I'm just going to call it. I'm going to call pubsub. Async iterator. And I'm going to put in my tag that I find uh, up here. This new employee. Um, and so if you remember this pub sub async iterator 
this is what we defined in our uh, walkthrough here on the subscription piece is this is what you're essentially listening to um, when uh, when clients are subscribing uh, okay so that should be set up um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and now we have to figure out what our triggering event is going to be um, we have our subscribing event here as PubSub Async Iterator. Now we have to figure out where we're actually going to um, basically listen for the triggering event and then publish out to our um, clients. And what we're going to do, since we're since this is triggering on new employee, we're going we're going to go down to the add employee function, and somewhere in this add employee resolver, we're going to sneak in a pubsub.publish function, if you remember from um, our little graph graphic here, um, this pubsub.publish. Uh, so let's go back to our code. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do it right before we hit the return. Um, and actually, you know what? I think it's better practice to do it before we actually update our uh, data. I think that's the more efficient way to do it. Um, so we're going to do it right here. And the way we do this is we'll call our pubsub function. And we'll do pubsub.publish. And if you remember correctly, the first argument is the tag that we are publishing for. And the second parameter this one is actually going to contain, we're going to pass in um, some properties that will essentially be used later, um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. But uh, just bear with me on this. Um, I'm going to define a new employee variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the new employee uh, object that I'm essentially creating and then, and then publishing and then updating uh, my database to. Uh, the subscription will use this later. Um, since this is ES6, you can actually, since they're the same name, you can just, uh, you can do this. And it, it's the same thing as what you, what you just saw before. Go, so I'll go ahead and save that. And I think we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, rerun node index.js. And it looks like I have a little error there, so... Um, let's see, pub sub is not a function. Um, I have a typo here. So this is actually, it should be uppercase S. And down here, I have to specify that as well. Uh, so if I rerun this, it should work. No, it doesn't. Uh, connect set property of EE of undefined. Uh, I just forgot to, obviously, since this is a constructor, when you're, initi when you're initiating this, you have to specify new. So, dumb mistake. Uh, so this should work now. And it looks like it is working. All right. To see this in action, what we're going to do is we're going to have one mutation and one subscription. Uh, the subscription is going to be obviously for the new employee that we're listening for. The mutation is going to be the add employee. When we add the employee, we should see the new employee subscription update. Uh, so we'll just do it one at a time. Uh, first, we'll make a mutation for add employee. Uh, um, and we'll specify two variables, name of type string, and it's required. And then we'll do employer ID of type int. Uh, and then we'll do add employee uh, name of the name we just specified and employer ID of the employer variable we just specified.
All right, and since we obviously have uh, you know, two variables in here, we have to specify query variables down here. So I'll do name John, uh, I'll do like Tim Beck or something like that. And then I'll do uh, employer ID of one and sorry, this is JSON. So these have to be stranded by uh, double quotes. All right, excellent. It looks a lot better. Um, for just for good measure, we'll re just return a few values here, just so we know it was successful. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's all good to go. I'll just run it once, just to make sure it's working. Yep, it is. Okay. So now we're going to actually do the subscription query. This works very similar to mutations. So you specify it's subscription. Oh, okay, so it's like subscription. This one's going to be new employee. Uh, pretty sure it's new employee. Um, sorry. Yes, it's new employee. And um, we're not going to use the variable. We're not, we're not going to use the parameter at first. So if I get back to my playground, um, yeah, I'll just do new employee. And let's see, I'll do new employee. And we'll just return some of the stuff that we want to return. If you remember correctly, uh, we're returning just the employee data type here, which I could use the ID, name, and employer if I want to. So I'll just go ahead and specify those. The ID, name, employer, and employer you have to actually specify at least one, one value. So I'll just say name. Um, and that should be good to go. So if I click here, it'll sit here and it'll start listening. Um, now it's just waiting for some sort of update. So if I go over to my other graph, GraphQL playground, I'll try to open these up at the same time. Um, okay, so I'll just resize this so you can see both at the same time. Um, I'll just add a different employee. Uh, I'll say Isaac and I'll do um, Jason Moore and he'll work for the employer one too. Ta-da, they show up there. Um, so the subscription is listening in real time and then it's showing up. Let me just move this over so you can see it. And so if I come over here and maybe add Jason a few more times, you, you can see it getting updated in real time. So you can see that ID getting incremented. It's just, it's adding a whole bunch of Jason Moore's to Harry's pub. I can come in here and I can change like, I'm going to change the employer ID. I can add more JSON Moores, but this time to UPS. I can change, you know, whatever name I want. I can say Corey McAboy and add this guy, adding a bunch of Corey's to UPS. And so that's subscriptions in real time. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, let's see, there's another thing that I want to show you. Obviously, um, you may have seen the uh, this parameter that's specified here which is optional uh, so we can't actually use this however we have not hooked this up so if I were to come into here and put in a parameter this shouldn't work um, let's see I could do dollars dollars dollar sign employer ID um, int and if I were to come down here, let me just expand this out. Um, employer ID and the employer ID parameter I just specified. So if I, let's see, stop and then continue listening again. Let's see if this works. Okay, so it does work. However, that's not really the intention. The, inten the idea that of you subscribing to a certain employer ID is that you only want to see updates for that particular employer ID. We haven't programmed that in yet, 
So we are going to, so the way that we do that is we have to take the subscribe function and sort of, um, we have to add in a new, uh, a new function here. If we go up to the top, we're going to add in another item here called with filter. And this with filter, what this is going to do is what we'll do is we'll actually call with filter here. And this with filter is going to take in two arguments. The first argument is basically our pub sub iterator function, which we have right here. And I'm actually going to put this in another line. And let's see. Okay, yep. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is the second parameter, this is actually the criteria that we're going to uh, that we're going to execute to determine which clients we we um, we send our updates to. Um, so these this query parameter is going to take in a function, and this function is going to take in two parameters. One is payload, and the other one is args. And this is a function. So let's just find arrow function. Now, args. What this is, is this all, this is all the arguments that we actually called our subscription function with. So, which would be just this guy in our case, this employer ID. The payload, this payload, this is the data that we're sending in to this pub sub dot publish command. Where, we're, where we have the second parameter here, and we are passing in this new employee. Um, this is essentially our payload. Now what we're going to want to do is we want to check to see if this employer ID that the user is subscribing to, um, they only want to su subscribe to the employer ID updates. So we're going to have to check this employer ID against this payload that we're sending in, this employer ID payload that we're sending in through here. We just want to make sure that um, that matches up with uh, the employer ID and the parameter. So the way we do that is we're going to uh, return a big condition. We're going to do payload dot new employee dot employer ID equals 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 args dot employer ID. Again, this this args employer ID, this is whatever is called in our subscription new employee function. This payload dot new employee, this is this is what comes through the publish command when you're publishing updates to your clients. If this returns true, uh, this the the published update will go through uh, back to the client. If it's false, it will not. Um, so if we go ahead and save this guy and we go back to our playgrounds, um, add employee won't change, but this guy will. So the subscription, um, obviously we specified this before. And actually, since I did make an update, I do need to restart node. Let me just cancel that, rerun it. Um, so what it will do, we already specified this, the employer ID. So I'll just make sure to define it here in this query variable. I'll do uh, employer ID is one. Now I'll go ahead and run that. And we are listening for updates. Um, don't worry about that, that error there. And so here this update is, is looking against employer two. So if this is working correctly, I won't see anything there. Yep, nothing there. If I change this to one, I should see an update over there on the right. And there it is. Okay, so our with filter function is working appropriately. If I change that back to two, I won't see any more updates. So as you can see, no more updates are occurring. That ID is not incrementing. So this is working 
uh, just fine. Um, how, now, so one thing to know is that we do have a small deficiency in our code. Um, the way this condition works is if I, let's say that, um, I think maybe if I don't pass in, if I don't pass this guy in, I don't believe this works anymore. So if I, let's see if I stop and listen again. Um, so the way this is supposed to work, if you don't pass in a parameter, it should listen to all the updates. However, if you, if you come back in here and I remove the parameter and I try to add a new employee, you can see that those values are not getting updated. And the reason why that is, is because this condition in here, this is failing. And as it, since it's failing, or since this is returning false, it is not passing the updates back through the uh, async iterator. So the way that we fix this is we just do a little trick. Um, we'll just check to see if they, if uh, args.employer ID, um, and we'll just do an or or there. Okay, so the way that this works is if that if you don't have an employer ID passed in, this is going to return true right here. And since this is an or operator node, since this is true, it won't do anything over here because it already knows that this entire statement is going to be true. Um, so if I'm not passing in an employer ID, it's going to return true every single time and it's going to pass the update back to the client. If we do pass it in, um, this thing will actually return where well, this args employer ID will exist, but we negate it, so this return in false, and then, it'll, and then it will check this condition. This condition is true, it'll pass it through to the async iterator, and your subscription will be updated. Uh, so I can save that, and I'll, I'll restart node. Um, and I'll, let's see. This should work now, so I'll listen to updates. Now come in here and add new employees, and there you go. There it gets updated. It's updating for uh, employer two. If I switch to one, you should see it getting updated as well. Now if I come back in here, if I add on employer ID of int, and add the parameter on here, employer ID of employer ID, and I just listen on one. Come back into here. I'm adding employer employee from one. I'll see the updates. If I switch this to two, I won't. All right, excellent. Okay, so that's good. Uh, there's one more thing I will show you about the subscription, especially you know the resolver. You can actually have one more function. Um, that's that well I guess that you may recognize and that's called resolve this is optional for subscriptions but you can pass in a function for resolve and the only time you would want to do this is if you wanted to edit some sort of the if you want to edit any of the subscription data before it goes back to the client so maybe if I want to uh, take a name and format it or something like that you can have a resolve function. This thing only this this thing executes after um, subscribe, and it only does so for anything that um, passes through the with filter clause or the with filter function. Um, so j just just for an example, what I can do is I can explicit return an object, and I can just specify the ID. And I'll just do payload. Oh, actually, I do have to have a parameter here. Payload. Um, dot new employee dot ID. Uh, I'll just do the name too. Oh, I'll just take a shortcut here. I'll do name name, and then I'll do the um, empl employer ID uh, employer ID. Uh, 
and what I'll do is I'll just make one small alteration to this just to show you. Um, so I'll do a template string and I'll add on maybe like comma PhD to each name just to show you how this is updated. So I'll save this guy. I'll restart node. And then I'll come into here and I'll just make sure that I, I'll do one. I'll listen on employer one. Um, I'll come in here, I'll add an employee. And okay, you can see there. All right, now we've got our name with comma PhD appended to it. Uh, so that's essentially what the resolve does is it just it just adds on or you can just alter the data in any way shape or form that you want I think this could be useful maybe if you're like encrypting some sort of data or something like that it could be useful other than that I really haven't seen m many use cases for it all right well that's it for the video I, I hope this was useful see you guys next time